This is Personal Injury Court. This is the matter of Taylor versus Taylor. Ms. Taylor, it's my understanding that you are suing your daughter for injuries you sustained when her cat attacked you. You're asking this court to award you $80,000 for past medical expenses and $20,000 for future medical expenses for a total award of $100,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Taylor, you believe that had your mom not gone where she wasn't supposed to be, she never would have been injured by your cat, true? Yes, Your Honor. Now let's get into the legal sauce. Uh, Ms. Taylor, you're suing your daughter today. How does that happen? How do we get here? I'm the mother. She's my daughter. I love her. I've done the best of everything I can for her. She's beautiful. She's smart. She's headstrong. And when she and her mechanic boyfriend couldn't afford their own place, I stepped in. I thought, I have a garage apartment. It's beautiful. I furnished it myself. So I'll give them very reasonable rent. I did insist on a lease. Well, you sound like you're being a good mom. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Taylor, you rent an apartment from your mom. Yes, Your Honor. How did that come to be? Your Honor, first let me start off by saying this is extremely, extremely difficult for me. I mean, no child wants to see their mother hurt. Um, I am an only child, and growing up, we've been very close. Okay, so this has got to break your heart to see your mom hurt by your cat. It does. Tell me how this happened. I'd been to the market, and I bought some things, and I wanted to give some of them to her. What kind of things? Well, I bought some perishables, like some really cool pears and some peppers that are rare to find, and I, I bought a gift for her cat. That's, that's love. I'm telling you that's love. love. I wish my mom did bring me some good pears, I tell mm-hmm. you. So you bring the pears, and then what happens? Well, I called. She didn't answer her phone. She never answers her phone for me. So I got home, and I went up to the garage apartment and knocked on the door. No answer. So I had a key, so I let myself in. All right. I figured I would leave the gifts on the counter, and she'd be surprised when she got home. I thought, I've never seen this cat. Mm -hmm. And I looked around. I didn't see a cat. So the bedroom door was closed. So I opened it. Oh, my God, so fast. Claws, teeth, nasty cat, nasty beast, wild beast. And it it, it clawed my face. It clawed my chest. It tore my hands up. Play it up, Mom. bleeding everywhere. So I took one of the pillows and threw it at it, and I slammed the door. I had to run downstairs, blood down the banister. I called 911 and Wendy. This is crazy. And I did send a picture of that cat to the court. So, so your mom gets clawed by your cat. This is, is the kind of cat you had. Right. It's a cat. That's a picture of that's a cat like my cat. That is not my cat, Your Honor. Well, is this the kind of cat that you have? It is the kind of cat that I own. Yes. I'm, I mean, for the record, I mean that's not your normal tabby cat that I grew up looking at. That's a serval cat. It is a serval cat, Your Honor. My cat is domesticated. It's just like a pit bull. It depends on how you bring them up, and he's been brought up with love. But there are several states that these cats are illegal. I know they're legal where you live, but there are several states you can't even have this cat. I understand. So you've got this serval cat. Is is it locked in a bedroom? Where is it? Well, my cat likes to spend time with us while we watch TV out in the living room. He does sleep most of the day because when he plays, he plays hard. But he sleeps with us at night. But that's not hard play. That's, no. that's an attack. That's no, a mauling. No, Your Honor, that's not my fault. That is not my fault. She entered my apartment unannounced. I had My not... apartment? I run it. It's my apartment. My apartment. Your Honor, I had not had the chance to formally be able to introduce my mother to my cat. So he is very nervous around new people. And it takes, I mean, he's very comfortable with me and Craig, my boyfriend. So he's never tried to maul you never. or maul Craig. Now, there's Monty, there's my baby. Look not at him. Cute. How okay. can you not love him? Well, he's he looks lovable cute. there, but lovable cats don't do this. <laughs> You're kitty kitty. But no. your honor, do pit bulls not attack someone that they don't know that enters apartments unaware? They'll bark first. It depends on how the animal is brought up. But in bringing him up, do you let your, what do you call your cat? What's Monty. The, okay, do you let Monty walk all around the apartment he when does. you're there? He does. 
See, there he is on the couch. Look at him. On my couch? That that doesn't look like the kind of cat that would do this, but but it is, because it happened. Did, did you know the cat was there? No, I knew there was supposed to be a kitten. It wouldn't have happened if she didn't go into my bedroom. You had no business being in my apartment. You say your mom would not have been injured had she not gone into your bedroom. But you got to acknowledge she was being the kind of mom that everybody wants. To put fruit in your place, to make you happy. She clearly isn't that keen on your boyfriend. But she's trying to do something nice for y'all. But, Your Honor, she paints this pretty picture. But, you know, when I can't have friends over because she's snooping, she's constantly, constantly calling me. I have to keep the ringer off because I have no privacy. Well, I'll say this. Some folks today really wish their mama could call. You didn't know that this cat was dangerous? No, she showed me a picture of a kitten, a little friendly cat. Did you oh, tell your mom that the cat, cat was dangerous? I did. You're, well, no, not that it was dangerous, no. no well, did you tell your mom it was a servo cat? I took the text message between us. I submitted it to the court. Let's put it up on the plasma screen. You did submit the text message. I sent her a picture of Monty. Hey, Mom. I had a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be able to adopt and I wanted to give him a home. He's a very unique cat. I've always been an animal person growing up. I've always loved animals, from dogs to ferrets. I thought it was that cute kitten. You remember getting this text. Was that your response? Go ahead, I'm okay with a cat. You responded that way, right? Yes, but in the lease, it clearly states under 30 pounds. That's not much of a restriction. That was not under 30 pounds what hit me. Ms. Taylor, you see on the plasma your renter's agreement, the lease. And yes. paragraph four says no pets over 30 pounds. That's your signature under tenant, right? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Taylor, that's your signature under landlord. Yes, sir. Now, regardless of your family relationship, you all have a legal relationship of landlord tenant. And you got to live by the lease. Now, Ms. Taylor, you knew about the cat, but you didn't know it was a servo cat. No, I would never, ever. Who would? Wonder if someone brings a child over, and then I'll get sued, too. My best friend Stephanie has a child, and she brings her over all the time. Well, the reality is, is that any time you own an animal that's kind of beyond the scope of the normal cats, dogs kind of things, you got to protect against it, against it doing bad things. Your Honor, I have my copy of the lease. Yes, ma'am? Number seven says... The landlord must give 24-hour notice before coming over to the house. Yeah, but wait, wait a minute now. Because you can never look at a legal document like that and focus just on the part that is in your favor. Paragraph 4 says that no animals over 30 pounds, that's as applicable as what you have just pulled up in paragraph 7. You see that? Yes, Your Honor. You kind of broke your lease. I was looking at the text message that you sent, and frankly, I would have looked at that and said, oh, she's going to have a little cat there. That's cool. Not a servo cat. Well, once that cat went crazy, I think he sprayed something. Now it stinks to high heaven. It all has to be redone. You just want to keep me reasonable. under your thumb so I can not you. That Ms. is Taylor, reasonable. Taylor, ladies, you got to talk to me. When y'all want to talk, you can talk after this, because y'all going to be mama and daughter after this. Today, you're litigants. Look at this text message. That, that doesn't look like anything that's going to try to eat me. <laughs> that's how he started out, Your Honor. When people get puppies, do they not, you know, the puppy grows up, the cat grew up. I mean, they get bigger than you expect them to be. Miss Taylor, tell me about your injuries. Well, my face is clawed. I'm going to live with that for the rest of my life. My hand... What happened to your hand? I mean, it's torn up. It's eaten. I have tendonitis. That's an infection in the tendons. So Monty bit you? Monty bit, clawed, scraped, grabbed my chest. It was horrifying. I thought I was going to die. Nobody should have an animal like that in their house. I see that you have submitted uh, $80,000 in past medical bills, and you're asking this court to give you $20,000 for your future medical bills, true? Yes, sir. I have months more to go through. 
To better understand your injuries, Ms. Taylor, this court has consulted Dr. Samantha Brown Parks. Sheriff Matt, will you get Dr. Samantha Brown Parks from the hallway? Yes, Your Honor. Morning, Doctor. Good morning, Your Honor. Can you explain the plaintiff's injuries? Sure. So our plaintiff has very serious injuries. All cat bites are serious, whether they be small cats or giant cats. Um, and cat and dog bites are not the same. Cats have a particular type of bacteria, a more pathogenic version, if you will. Cats have different teeth than dogs or humans, and they're pointy and they're thin, almost like a needle. So they create a puncture wound, like you see here, and it takes that pathogen, puts it deep inside the wound where it can get to her tendons and cause the tenosynovitis that she has. Doctor, thank you so much. You are released. You're we welcome. appreciate you. So you see, your mom got very, very serious injuries from your cat. Yes. I mean, I, I, I can see from the look on your face that you didn't want this to happen. No. You, you all, you present such a puzzle to me that people who clearly love each other end up in litigation. It's just a sad day. Now, this is a serval cat that, frankly, until this case, I didn't realize that people actually kept these as pets. But to give us more information regarding how serval cats behave, their habits, this court has consulted a feline animal behavior expert, uh, Miss Melissa Burns. Sheriff, will you get Miss Burns? Yes, sir. I know this is tough for both of y'all. Yes, Your Honor. Hello, Ms. Burns. Hello. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing fine. What is a serval cat? Explain that for us. So a serval cat is a type of wild cat that's found in Africa. Um, when they're little, like I brought a video so you can see one as a kitten. They're really cute. They look very much like a domestic cat when they're young. They tend to get large. They can be 40 pounds, sometimes a little more than that. They're also very territorial. They're a giant 40 pound cat with a catitude. Like even our domestic cats can have attitudes about them. And so when you increase that and you have a much larger animal, cats can be unpredictable, especially in a house setting where they don't have any space to back up. Okay. If they feel threatened, they're going to attack first before they know what's gonna happen. So this isn't really like a normal house cat. This is something no. in addition to that. This is very much not like a normal house cat. Normal house cats don't really jump 10 feet in the air and have big claws and all of that, so. Well, ma'am, thank you so much. You are released. Yes. We appreciate it. Thank you. Folks, I think I've heard enough. I'm ready to render my ruling. <laughs> Folks, in every personal injury case, you, Miss Taylor, have to prove three things in order to win. You have to prove that your daughter was wrong and that her wrong caused your injuries. You believe yes, that if your daughter had simply let you know that Monty was there, you could have avoided that. If your daughter had followed the lease and not had Monty because he was too big for the uh, pound restriction in the lease, you never would have been attacked because a normal cat would have never done this. You, Miss Taylor, I know it's been a road of ups and downs having a hovering mom. They say helicopter moms, right? Yes, yes, Your Honor. But believe you me, the other side of not having a helicopter mom can be worse. I applaud you all for getting a lease. That is very important. But the legal reality is you're not mother and daughter in my courtroom. You're a landlord and a tenant, and I've got to look at the lease as to what the law requires you to do. The law required you to have a pet that was not 30 pounds or more. The law required you, Ms. Taylor, to give notice to your daughter. Both of you violated the lease. Here, as a landlord, you have certain responsibilities to give notice. The purpose of notice is to allow you to put Monty in some place that your mom couldn't get to. You could have put the fruit and the collar and the other beautiful gifts on the table and left you still were a trespasser at that point because you did not have permission. You were certainly a trespasser to go into the bedroom where you were attacked. And despite how badly I feel about your injuries and the future for you, and frankly, some of the scars this event has put on your relationship, the law requires me to find in your daughter's favor because you are a trespasser. That is my final verdict, and this oh, matter is adjourned. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
pay for it. I'm really sorry. I just needed to make a point. But you I'm had so to do this? Mr. Cooper, you are suing Miss Jenkins for injuries that you sustained when her dog bit you at her house while you were providing a service. You've asked this court to award you $18,000 for past medicals, $12,000 for future medicals, $250,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $280,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Jenkins, you claim that you gave clear instructions as to what Mr. Cooper was supposed to do, and had he followed those instructions, he would have never met your dog, true? Yes, Your Honor. Let's get into the legal sauce. Now, what kind of service were you providing to Ms. Jenkins? I'm a HVAC repairman, sir. Uh, nope. Air conditioning and heating. Yes, sir. How long have you been doing that? About 10 years now. What led you to, to provide service at Ms. Jenkins' house? I work for a company, you know, and I was out doing another service call. I just put in an air handler. And the dispatcher gave me the work order for Mrs. Jenkins. And what were you supposed to do at her house? Uh, she just said the AC doesn't work. I, I, you know, tell you the truth, a lot of times I don't know what I'm in for. Miss Jenkins, so you had a hot house. Yes, Your Honor, I did. And you needed him to come and make it cooler. Exactly. Mm. Tell me about that day. Well, Your Honor, my air conditioner was out and it was very, very hot. There was a heat wave and it was unbearable for me and my family. So I called an air conditioner company just to see if it, they can get an air uh, person out. And they said yes, so I made the appointment for him to come out. And so just to stay cool, I went to stand by the pool until he came. So, Mr. Cooper, when you arrived at the house, what happened? Well, um, I was supposed to text the customer, and I did, and I got a text back, and they told me where to park, you know, and usually they tell me where to come in. I got a text that said, uh, go through the door on the left. And who sent that text to you? I believe it was her son. Tell me how you got injured. I pulled up into the driveway like they asked me to, and I uh, pulled on under some trees, because I didn't know how long I was going to be there, you know, and if I'm there late or whatever, I want to eat some lunch, you know, I don't want to be in a... Yes, sir. ...like under the blazing sun, so... I parked under the, the trees, and I looked, and he said, enter through the door on the left. So okay. I looked over to my left, and there was a door. And, um, you know, the front door is there, too, but I haven't once been welcomed yet in the front door of somebody's house because I got tools and I got grease and, you know, everything on my boots, and they don't want me to walk right through their front door. Had you ever been to Miss Jenkins' house before this day? No, never, never. So what happened? I go, and I start looking around, and usually... Um, you know, you, there's a there's an outside door, and this is just usual. And it's there's an outside door, and I walk into a, it's either a room or a small garage or a, a mud room or whatever. And then there's another entry door. Okay. And there's been so many times that I'm banging on that one door, you know, and nobody comes out. That I've just you know naturally since I was there for a work order, I would now I just start going inside and I'll knock on the inside door. Okay. So I go and I shut the door. And uh, I start moving towards the other door, and I hear a noise, and next thing you know, I got this dog. It latches onto my arm. My tools drop. I mean, it starts... The thing was ripping. I never heard flesh rip before, but, I, but I'm sitting there, I'm pushing on the dog, and it's ripping. And finally, I, I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I felt bad for the dog because I punched it in the head, and it let go of my arm, and then it grabbed a hold of my leg and pulled a piece of flesh off my shin. Are you kidding me? So then I kick it off my leg, and then it jumps back on my arm again. I mean, it was horrible. I, I, I thought, well, this is where I'm going to die. So this dog was mauling you. Yeah, I couldn't get it off of me. And you thought you were going to die. I was pretty sure, because I had, by that time, I had blood in my eyes, and I couldn't... I couldn't, like, see the swat or nothing. I was sure he was going for my neck. I guess was... if you went down to the floor, this could be a death case. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Miss Jenkins, is your dog capable of killing somebody? Not at all, Your Honor. Not at all. My dog is not vicious, Your Honor. What's He's your dog's vicious. name? My dog's name is Pancakes. Pancakes. Yes. <laughs> okay, he looks like a good guy. Oh, amazing, amazing, and you, amazing. And you raised him from the time he was a puppy? Yes, I raised him from the time he was a puppy, and I got him professionally trained. Okay. Yes. You had a trainer I work had with a him. trainer, yes, because I needed him for protection, Your and, Honor. And this is uh, Pancakes as a little that's guy? my baby. Oh, yeah, that's Pancakes. Now, uh, Mr. Cooper, that's not the dog that bit you, right? Not oh, that yeah. little puppy, it's the other one. No, that's the dog. And everybody's acting like, oh, the poor little dog. She said he had the thing trained. That thing is trained I to did kill. have him professionally trained. You just didn't <laughs> yeah. follow instructions. No, that's I what it was. Ms. Jenkins, 
Yeah. How did you know something had gone wrong? Okay, actually, I heard a noise from by the pool, and I was like, okay, what's going on? So I went in, and I saw Mr. Cooper bleeding all over my carpet, and I was like, okay, basically, so I attempted to call the ambulance and to get some towels to help him. He must have been bleeding a lot he for was, you to get towels. He was, ble he was bleeding, but you know what, Your Honor, I believe he pro provoked my dog, because at the end of the day, if Mr. Cooper wouldn't have walked through the wrong door, we wouldn't be in this court right now. I mean, if they say I didn't follow specific instructions, if they were specific, they would have said, go through the front door. You say he went to the wrong door. How would he know what door is the right door or the wrong door? My son texts him the instructions on which door to go in, and okay. I brought the evidence. Yes, ma'am, you've submitted that to the court. Yes, let's, I... Let's yes, take a look at it. Could you read your son's text, Ms. Jenkins? This is Peter, your AC technician. I'm on my way. Where should I park? You can park in the driveway. Go to the door on the left. Copy that, be there in 20 minutes. That's what he texts back. Mr. Cooper, do you remember receiving this text? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So, Ms. Jenkins, you submitted a diagram of your home. Yes, Wa sir. Walk me through this right door, wrong door issue. He was supposed to park in the driveway, get out of his car, go to the door on the left. My dog is secure here because we have him secure, you know, from the neighbors and everything else. Yes, ma'am. But since he... Didn't follow instructions. Apparently, he couldn't read. He parked in the wrong place. I can follow instructions. I can read, but I'm not a mind you can reader, follow okay? Okay, but you so if you're go not a mind reader, you left. can't read. There's two doors You cannot on the left. read. You're such an idiot, and you, you can't been, read. I appreciate you all having a conversation, but two things have to happen. You got to talk to me, and we will not insult anyone in my courtroom. I apologize. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Cooper. Yes, sir. You say the instructions weren't clear. Come over here and tell me what you understood those instructions to tell you to do. You got it, Your Honor. Take Give your time. Second. <sighs> now, she, when I got the text, and I mean, this is where it gets kind of weird. When I got the text, she said, he said, pull in the driveway and go through the door on the left. Right? So I pulled in, I went under the trees, and as you can see, Your Honor, there's two doors to the left. I went, and I got my tools out, and I said, well, it's got to be this door. It can't be the front of the house. And the thing is, Your Honor, if I knew there was a, a dangerous, vicious dog in the house, I never would have went in there. My son gave him specific instructions on where to enter. If he thought... But Your Honor, there no, wasn't no, no. specific if he instructions. Thought that the instructions wasn't clear, he should have retexted my son. Can you clarify the directions? I fully we understood the directions. No, you if he had a vicious read. dog in the house, no, 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 you should have no. said Can't something about it. Y'all are at it again. Sorry, Your Honor. Gotta have order in the court. Miss Jenkins, pancakes have never bitten anybody before. Pancakes has never, never bitten anybody before. Now, Ms. Jenkins, you brought your son with you today? Yes, Your Honor. And his name is Mark? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Jenkins, would you stand up, please, and come to the podium? Mr. Jenkins, you sent a text on behalf of your mom. Yes, I did, Your Honor. What did you expect Mr. Cooper to do? I expected Mr. Cooper to pull to the left side of the house, to the front, and go through the front door. He did not do that. He went to the left area of the house, where she already stated where we keep the dog, Pancakes. Did it surprise you that Pancakes bit Mr. Cooper? No, he's a guard dog. If you just walk into our house unannounced, that's his job. Did you tell him you had a guard dog? No. Now, Mr. Cooper, you had no idea there was a guard dog, right? Well, I tell you what, if I knew, I wouldn't have gone in that door. So, Mr. Cooper, tell me about your injuries. On my shin, they had to do a skin graft, because um, one time it, he, he was biting my shin and I kicked it and just ripped the whole piece of flesh off. That's, really? that's something I'd never heard before in my life. It's Are you kidding flesh me? ripping, you know? And then uh, on my knee, he grabbed a hold of my knee. That is a nasty, nasty wound. That's on your leg? Yeah, and you can see how deep it went. I mean, every time I would try to get the dog off of me, it would rip my skin. Miss oh, Jenkins, you see, this was a very scary day for Mr. Cooper. You're right, Your Honor, but at the end of the day, if he would have followed the instructions that my son texted him, it wouldn't have been a scary day for him. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Thank you. You can sit down. Thank you. You've submitted $18,000 in past medical expenses and then $12,000 for future medical expenses, so your journey's not over as to these injuries. Well, no, I got physical therapy and there's still stitches in my leg right now, and my fingers right now, I can't clench them together 
you know, to do like work on my job. And I mean, it, I don't know if it means anything or not, but I play guitar. I can't even play guitar anymore. I can't walk. I can't do my normal job. I can't even go to the bathroom at night without my cane. You know, now this is it. This is, this is how I get around. Mr. Cooper, in order to understand the nature of your injuries, the court has consulted Dr. Samantha Brown Parks. Sheriff, if you'll get Dr. Brown Parks in. Yes, sir. Good day, doctor. How are you? Good, Your Honor. How are you? I'm doing well. Could you explain the nature of Mr. Cooper's injuries? Mr. Cooper has several injuries, scratches and puncture wounds to his hands, his arm, and very impressively to his knee. So the dog punctured his skin and also tore back as he was puncturing. Dogs tend to bite and tear. What's the actual mechanism of destroying the flesh? Actually, I've brought a video. Can well, I show you? It. So this is an attack dog training video, and it shows the dog. It goes mostly for the limbs first to bring its victim to the ground. Okay. So as it's pulling it down, it injects its canine teeth into the flesh and then does a back and forth motion with its neck to actually tear the skin loose. So what's the future look like for him? Um, it would not be unusual for him to have multiple revisits for scar revision. Doctor, thank you. You're welcome. Your release. We appreciate you. Ms. Jenkins, you, you don't seem like you take any blame for this. At the end of the day, it was his fault because he no, shouldn't wasn't. have walked through the wrong door. Well, he I want to I want to understand this. Did you, your son, or anyone tell him that Pancakes the guard dog was there on your property? Your Honor, can I show you something? Uh, you brought uh, something. Yeah. Sure. Have, will you, will it's you a work that order, one? Your Honor. Okay. And I I mean, I'm kind of <sighs> Miss Jenkins, did you see this work order? Actually, That is your signature, right? Yes, it is. Is it fair for him to assume, looking at this work order, that there is not a dog on your premises? I didn't check the box about a dog because a lot of times when you do, sometimes they don't send service people out. Sometimes because of the dog. So I didn't do. like, yeah, they're I did eating not They're kind of worried no, about this very don't. thing, though. But right? at the end of the day, Your Honor, he went through the wrong door. I don't understand why he couldn't follow instructions. I know that you walked through the side door and you were mauled by this dog. Yes, sir. But you got to acknowledge that had you walked through the front door, you probably wouldn't have met me today. No, I wouldn't have. And if I knew there was a dog on the premises, I wouldn't have walked in any door. Folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff, you, Mr. Cooper, must prove three things. You must prove that the defendant, Ms. Jenkins, did something wrong. That's the first thing. The second thing you must prove is that her wrong caused the third thing, your injuries. So it's like a three-legged stool. Here, you put up evidence that Ms. Jenkins had a vicious guard dog sequestered in a room. You didn't know the dog was there. And you also weren't clear about which door to go in. You went to the door to your left as you parked. And you now are requesting this court to award you a lot of money for your injuries and your future. Yes, sir. Ms. Jenkins, you all acted responsibly. Isolating pancakes had Mr. Cooper come to the right door, this never would have happened. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. In fact, pancakes has never bitten anyone before. The law recognizes something called the one bite rule. That is, believe it or not, your dog does get one bite. After that, you as the dog owner are on notice that he can bite someone and you would be liable if Pancakes had a history of snapping at or being aggressive. But that does not let you off the hook because you have a special dog. You have a dog in that vicious category and it holds you strictly responsible when your dog hurts somebody. But in addition to that, your directions simply were not clear. I think it was responsible to give directions, but left depends on where you park. And in that regard, I find you responsible for Mr. Cooper's injuries. Mr. Cooper, I'm going to award you $18,000 for your past medical expenses, $12,000 for your future medical expenses, and $250,000 for your pain and suffering. I find in your favor, in the amount of $280,000 and against Ms. Jenkins, that is my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Thank you, Ron. 
Anderson. This is the matter of Williams versus Anderson. Miss Williams, you are suing Miss Anderson for injuries that you sustained when her dogs attacked you on her property. You're asking this court to award you $68,000 for your medical expenses, $90,000 for your pain and suffering, for a total award of $158,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Miss Anderson, you believe that Miss Williams was a trespasser. Her injuries are her fault, not yours, right? Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. Tell me how you got to Miss Anderson's property. Your Honor, I have an 11-year-old son, John. He is absolutely amazing. One day we were watching a documentary and he saw that there were other kids in our country who go hungry. And he just, he, he has such a heart of gold. He was like, Mom, I have to do something. So he decided to start a charity. An 11-year-old kid. You're and, doing something right with that boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm so proud of him. And, you know, I, I just had to help him. I felt a little weird about you know, asking people for money, but, but I decided to go ahead and help him. So, you know, we live in a great neighborhood. I figured, why don't we start right here in our neighborhood? And Miss Anderson, she's one of my neighbors. And that's how you ended up on Miss Anderson's property? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Anderson, uh, this is a dog attack. Tell me about your dogs. My dogs are very good dogs, sir. They have been um, raised from puppies. They are huskies. Okay. And they're black and white. Those are our dogs Those at beautiful this time. Beautiful dogs. Beautiful dogs, yes, sir. They're very loyal and devoted, and we love them very, very much. They're just like our kids. So I are could... they pretty good-tempered dogs? They are. They're very good and tempered. We even-tempered as well. They just... Except the day that they attacked us. Ladies, I'm glad you did that, because we're not going to do that today. You're going to talk to me today, okay? All right. Now, Miss Williams, tell me what happened. Your Honor, um... Mrs. Anderson's house was the last house that we were going to. Um, we were walking, you know, up to the front of her house. We knocked on a door, expected somebody to just open the door. And your little but... boy is with you? Yes. Okay. Yes. And out of nowhere, her two big, ferocious dogs just came up to us and just attacked us. I mean, they came full speed towards us. I mean, they, they, they were, you know, gritting their teeth. And they just started biting us. They were biting my arms. They bit my legs. So what did your little boy do? He, he, luckily, I was trying to protect him, but he ran away and he got in my car. So he wasn't but, hurt? No, well, he, he, he left me there because I was trying to protect him. Yes, ma'am. And I had one dog on one arm, the other one was on my leg, and one of them, his, his mouth was, he was, like, foaming at the mouth. He clamped down on my leg, Your Honor. He just started shaking it all violently. Oh. And he punctured a hole in my leg. I was blood everywhere. I'm really sorry this happened. <laughs> this, this is a nightmare. This is one of my nightmares. <laughs> Miss Anderson, where were you when this happened? I was at the back of my house doing my laundry. I had the radio playing. It was pretty loud. And I went up the hall to go to the restroom. I went to the door. I opened up the door, and that's when I saw Miss Williams on my stoop with her dog, with, with my dogs, which was horrific for me because my dogs have never jump the fence. They've never come out the gate. They've never attacked anyone. <laughs> but... So I what have, did you I've do got... when you heard her? I was screaming. I was yelling. I was trying to pull the dogs off of her, and then I blew my dog whistle that I had around my... To come out there, Your Honor, another neighbor had to call 911. Wait a minute. I was talking I to the ER. speak about this. I ended up in the ER. We're gonna have order in this court. I'm not gonna do this all day. Y'all talk to me. So you tried to pull your dogs off. Right. And you and said used... something about a whistle. Yes, sir. I have a dog whistle that I wear around my neck, and I blew the whistle two toots, and that brings the dog to my side immediately, and the dog came in. Why would your dogs attack someone? They had to have been provoked, sir. They had to have been. You know how kids are. Because they they're antagonize vicious. dogs. They'll because pick they're at them. Vicious. They will pull their tails. So did your little boy do anything to provoke these dogs? No, he did not. What was he her. doing? We were just simply walking up to the door. We had been to 10 other houses in the neighborhood with no problem. We had other houses that had dogs. They didn't attack us. They just came out of nowhere and attacked us. They were trespassing on my property. <laughs> my dogs went in protective mode of my home. Protective they were frightened. What? Talk to me. We were... So sorry. Now, y'all, I'm not going to wrestle with you today. Talk to me. Your Honor, can yes, I say sir. something? Here's what I want you to do. Because this is very important to you, and I respect that. I know you're in a lot of pain. I'd like you to take your time, 
Come over to the plasma screen. This is the front of Miss Anderson's house. Yes. And I want you to show me exactly how this happened. Take your time. We were just walking. My son and I were walking. We came up right straight to her door. We rang the doorbell. Yes, ma'am. And all of a sudden, the dog just came out and attacked us. Where did they come from? We have no idea. They just came right up on us. I wasn't expecting it. And before you knew it, you had dogs on you. Yes, sir. OK, you can go back to the podium. Miss Anderson, you've raised these dogs since they were puppies, right? Yes, sir. Have they ever been aggressive or tried to bite anybody? No, sir, never. And they've never, they've never jumped a fence, never went out the gate. They were trespassing on my land. As you can see on my house, I have a sign that says, beware of dogs. Did you see that sign, Miss Williams? No, Your Honor. But even if we did, beware of dog, OK. I won't go towards the fence. I wasn't even anywhere close to the fence. Beware of dog says beware of dog. That is to keep strangers out from coming to my house. But you said trespassing, and it wasn't like they climbed over the fence and tried to get in the back of your house, no. right? No, sir. <laughs> but they're good dogs. They're very good dogs, Except sir. for this day. Well, I, you know, I take them to nursing homes. They visit my seniors over After at the this? senior club. You take they your dogs to nursing that. homes? My After dogs this. are good dogs. Your they dogs have done are that. They're vicious dogs. Your dogs are unpredictable and dangerous. Ms. Williams, you're asking this court to award you $68,000 for your medical expenses. Tell me about your injuries. I see the lacerations on your face and that your arm is bandaged. Your Honor, they bit me on my arms, oh. my legs. My face is ruined, Your Honor. Oh. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed to even go to the store. Oh. <laughs> I get panic attacks. Yes, ma'am. I'm on medication right now, depression, because my esteem is just broken. Oh, so <laughs> I have all kinds of medical bills. I can't afford this stuff. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to take to fix my face. Psychologically, those scars are unrepairable to me. You're yes, honest. ma'am. In every personal injury case, there's always this aspect of the psychological impact of an injury, especially when it's facial injuries. Now, I see that you're asking this court for $90,000 for your pain and suffering. I understand why now. I didn't mean for it to happen. I can see this pained you. But despite tears comes responsibility. If you're going to have an animal, you've got to be responsible. <laughs> to better understand the nature of your injuries, this court has consulted Dr. Samantha Brown Parks to explain it to us. So, Sheriff Matt, will you get Dr. Samantha Brown Parks? Yes, Your Honor. Doctor, the kind of wounds on Miss Williams' arms, how do dogs do that much damage? So, dogs are especially equipped for biting. Ooh. They have large teeth to the side called canine teeth that actually puncture into flesh. They tend to latch on and move their head, which causes tearing in addition to the puncturing. So that's why her arm is ripped up like that. Absolutely. Dogs can be quite dangerous, and it's in their genes to attack a prey. From a physical standpoint, this could be a death case. Oh. Absolutely. How are these dog bites treated? We look at the wound and see if the edges can be approximated or brought together. Oh. If they can, we'll stitch them up and hope that they repair back into their original position. Occasionally, there's so much tearing that the two edges don't come together, so they misalign. If this happens, we'll put in some loose sutures along and then let it kind of scar in or granulate in on its own. Doctor, thank you so much. You're welcome. You are Thanks released. We appreciate you. Ms. Anderson, do you see now the damage that your dog's created? Yes, Your Honor. This is a bad situation for Ms. Williams. Your Honor, I, I have something else I'd like to... I did my own research about Ms. Anderson's dogs, and okay. I have something. I subpoenaed their medical records. Sheriff Matt, will you get the uh, documents from Ms. Williams? Thank you, sir. Because I couldn't understand why they just attacked us out of the blue. So I went online, and, and I read that dogs who are not neutered, especially adult dogs, they have a higher propensity, a higher chance of being aggressive. And clearly, Ms. Anderson's dogs were aggressive. You can see right there. Where it says neutered, both of them, it says no. Yes, Did sir. you know that your dogs were not neutered? Yes, sir, I do. Why didn't you neuter your dogs? Because I, we wanted 
to breed them. They're two purebred huskies, and I've never read anywhere where it says that your dogs will be aggressive if they're not neutered. To better understand the behavior of dogs, this court has consulted an animal behavior expert. Yes, sir. Mr. Greg Smith Aldridge. Sheriff, will you get Mr. Smith Aldridge in? Yes, Your Honor. Good day, sir. Hey, Judge, how are you? Welcome. Thanks very much. Can you tell us what prompts a dog to attack? Well, a dog can attack for a number of reasons. Most of them are rooted in fear. There's also possessive aggression. These are the most common ones. Possessive aggression being the protection of something like its property, something that it deems to be its home, uh, its human family, food, any resource that it thinks is important. There are also reasons like to establish dominance or frustration over something it can't get or get to, but those are the most common ones. I brought a video actually that shows what happens when somebody intrudes upon an animal's territory. As soon as the guy comes in and the dog is aware that there's an intruder there, you'll see the dog here in a second come around and immediately <laughs> attack the guy. <laughs> this is usually what happens. There's not a lot of warning here. The dog goes right to it. He's protecting his home, protecting his property. This is most commonly what happens when a dog attacks. Now, is there a certain way that dogs attack? Well, there's not just one way, but I actually bought a video of my dog. He's trained to attack, and you'll see here, the dog comes at me, and immediately he grabs an arm. They have one weapon, that's their mouth. So they're gonna grab an appendage, whatever they can get their mouth on first. But what they wanna do is bring you down, bring you to the ground. In their mind, they're helping to neutralize the threat at that point. Sir, in this case, Ms. Williams claims, and frankly brought documents to show that Ms. Anderson's dogs were not neutered. Does that play into the dog being aggressive? It can, it certainly can. I mean, a, a, a dog's testicles are the main source of testosterone. So once you take that away, you're lessening the amount of testosterone in a dog's body, it can play into it. If that dog has an aggressive nature from uh, an early age onto maybe the age of two, and you neuter it at that point, it's not gonna make much of a difference. Thank you, sir, we appreciate you. You were released. All right, thanks very much, Judge. I think I've heard what I need to hear and I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff has to prove three things. You, Ms. Williams, you have to prove that Ms. Anderson was wrong. That's the first thing. The second thing is that her wrong caused your harm. You have proven your harm. Here, you've put up evidence that Ms. Anderson's dogs came out of nowhere and attacked you and your son. Fortunately, he got away, but you did not. Being a good mama, you took all of the brunt of this attack and saved your little boy. And I know you don't feel good now, but you should feel good about that because you saved his life. Your son and you were also there on a very noble mission. I simply don't buy this stuff about a trespasser. You were there for the right reasons, doing the right thing, and this should have turned out right for you, and it did not. Because it did not, and you've got these terrible injuries, you want Ms. Anderson to pay for it because you believe it is her fault. Now, Ms. Anderson, you raised these puppies to dogs. They never showed aggression before. You can't understand why they attacked on this occasion. They got out of your fence but you still are kind of baffled that this even happened. Yes, sir. You did I not have never... the dogs neutered, but that's not necessarily a sign that your dogs will be aggressive. The principles of land ownership apply to this case. As a landowner, you've got to make sure that you are attentive to dangers on your property. If that danger is presented by the presence of a dog, You've got to make sure that you're attentive to that dog. If that dog has bitten someone or shown aggression, you are dead wrong and you are responsible for anything else that happens. The law is a one bite rule, however forgiving. If the dog's never been aggressive before, on the first bite, you are not responsible. Oh my God. Here, there is no evidence that these dogs were ever aggressive before this. And despite how much it pains me, the law requires that I find against you because Miss Anderson did not have notice that the dogs would be aggressive. So I find in favor of the defendant and breaking my heart, but against you. And that is my final verdict. And this matter is adjourned.